Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video series that's upcoming, we're going to focus more on the custom conversion than we are on the EV. But don't worry, we're still going to feature some uh, EV content because we're still EV for you. But we're going to do a little uh, on the side project and it's going to be a custom conversion but not an EV conversion although it's going to be electric uh, centric and that is we're going to convert an 8 foot by 16 foot cargo trailer to a travel trailer that will feature all electric appliances so uh, no propane it's going to be all electric so this is what we're starting with. Like I said, it's an eight foot by 16 foot. So eight foot wide, 16 feet long, seven foot high interior. And uh, it's got a um, ramp door in the rear, which we're not gonna use except for loading stuff in and out initially. I don't know if we'll use it after that, but, and it has a side door. It has a shallow V nose and uh, I can't get back far enough to show you very much. Getting a little cramped in our overflow warehouse here where I store all my stuff. But this is going to be our starting point. A quick look at the inside. It's finished in the inside, not many of them are finished in the inside, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to tear it all out. <laughs> and they went a little crazy with the staples. What happens if you give somebody a pneumatic staple gun, they just go bang, 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 bang. So. It's not going to come out too easy. We're going to have to, all that little trim stuff is going to have to be removed. And then I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of staples that have to be pulled, but not a big deal. So that's, uh, that's what our starting point looks like. Well, I hope you join us for this video series. It'll probably go for months as we go through the process of converting this to an all-electric travel trailer and we'll, uh, we'll give you the highlights and uh, you know, the challenges. We're, we've got a lot of items that we want to include in this build and there really isn't that much room. <laughs> it's smaller than our car trailer and so you know, it's going to be a challenge. It's taller than the car trailer, but it's, uh, it's not as wide and not as long. So, hope you join us and uh, stick around for more EV conversion videos coming up. One of the first things I'll be doing will be removing stickers. Because there's stickers all over this thing. Between advertising and warnings, there's just stickers everywhere, inside and out. Well, welcome to the uh, demolition portion. Actually, disassembling the interior of the trailer so that we can insulate the walls. We're going to insulate the floor and the ceiling. But all that trim that, you know, actually, you know, when you first looked in here at a glance, it, they did a pretty nice job of trimming the inside and, you know, not looking as bad as a lot of them that I've seen. 
but you can see that the trim wasn't covering a seam they're covering gaps and so that's not acceptable for what I want to do so we're going to have to uh, move these pieces this is uh, three three eighths and for the windows that I have and for being able to attach a little more you know things to the wall a little more securely in places where I can't reach the supports I'm going to go with half inch and I just wanted to show you kind of the stages here um, in this process and you can see uh, the way they had that aluminum piece over the spring really took up a lot more real estate than it needed and so we'll be encasing this in wood doing away with that the ceiling they just put some furring strips that they were able to staple to and let me tell you uh, there's no shortage of staples you can see that this is a kind of a u-channel that they're using and this isn't structural this is just here to support the uh, you know or provide an attachment point for the skin you can see the screws where the where they go through the aluminum skin and then for our plywood attachment and so that's the purpose of these uh, 16 inch uh, on center u pieces now we have this one right here which is you know inverted the other way you can see these are just you know tacked in there they're not not welded very well but this is a structural piece and again uh, these are not uh, certified welders obviously <laughs> I don't weld and I can do better than that anyway that's uh, what's going on so we can look deep channel there that's where it goes down to the frame little vent on the outside look at that so you know they got all the wiring uh, goes through the aluminum skin there just jagged edge nothing to protect the wire so that has to be rectified they've got these splices here those got to go world's worst splice I hate those things and of course the wires is all loose in here to rattle around and to you know maybe get caught in the spring pulley or something just quickie job we'll fix all this up stick it in some split loom replace the cheapo connectors with something better protect the wiring from any possible chafing and that sort of thing so a lot of work to do in doing one of these conversions but it's like anything else you just do it one step at a time well this is the 50 gallon water tank and I know there's no scale on the camera here but it's about 39 inches from the intersection of the front V and the side wall and the shower I have is a 32 inch shower and by the time the thickness of the wall and that shower it's going to be a close fit and so I'm not sure if it's going to be able to fit in front of the fender well or not so that still remains to be seen and I don't know if I'm going to put it in the vertical position or the hot horizontal position so just don't know yet just have to wait and see 
if it's in the horizontal position I think I have room under the counter to put the hot water heater you know I, I had everything penciled out I just kinda like to visualize things also so I I took photos to refer to and just kinda let you know the the thought process and all this so the tank has four you know pre-attached fittings so I'm going to use one of the large ones for the fill and uh, one large one we won't use and we'll use one of the smaller ones for the supply and the other small one will be for the vent. Like I said it's 50 gallons and uh, I don't off the top of my head know the exact dimensions but it's a pretty good sized tank but that's as large as I dared go, but I wanted to get as much, you know, water supply as possible. Give us as much, as much time since all of our electric and everything, it's all, you know, all of our appliances and everything will be electric. And so the real limitation is going to be um, on our water. And so I've got 50 gallons of fresh and I've got... Uh, uh, 46 of gray but four gallons in the hot water heater our weak link will be the, the gray tanks at 46 and that's all I could get to fit between the frame rails because they're gonna go in the nose here underneath not all the way forward of course but somewhere in that area so the weight will go from the side to the center and you are we're talking about a little bit of weight I mean that's 400 gallons of water so anyway um, and that will be offset unfortunately there's a door in the way but on the other side we're going to have our our batteries and the inverters and all that kind of stuff to help keep the weight somewhat equal on both sides of the trailer. So anyway, back to taking things apart. So doing some other, you know, preliminary inspections and viewings here. Uh, in the big picture, we're going to have a large, I don't say dinette, but large seating area with table in the rear. So we're going to have uh, four foot of benches on both sides and then a, a, a long table in the center and because we spend a lot of time you know playing games working on our computers so we wanted the large table top and then above that that will come down from the ceiling will be a queen size bed and um, and so, actually, those benches are going to be five feet long, um, not four feet. But anyway, uh, because the bed's going to go this way, and it is 50 or uh, 60 inches uh, wide, 60 by 80, queen size. So anyway, um, when you're sitting at the table where we're going to spend, you know, the major majority of the time when we're in the trailer eating. We're playing a game on a rainy day or something or sitting with our laptops this is going to be the part of the trailer where we're going to spend the most time so the idea i didn't want to cut out you know a, a, a large horizontal window because i didn't want to interfere with any of the structural pieces which you could and you can put in bracing and everything and i just didn't want to do that so i ordered windows and this is starting to slip on me here. Um, that would fit in between uh, your 16 inch centered support. So this is a 14 by 22 window. And the plan was to have three of them. So there's the back of the trailer. So one, two, three. And the five feet comes out to about here. So it's beyond, you know, the, the bed and stuff and of course the cabinets can't start uh, until 
after the bed because we want the bed to go down low. My wife and I are, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're closer to 70 than we are to 60. And so we're, we're not wanting to climb into a bed. So in order to get the bed all the way down, it's got to go down to the, the bench height where you would be sitting. And so our lower cabinets and upper cabinets won't start till after that five foot point. Then I'm not exactly sure, you know, if it's going to be five foot six, five foot four, or whatever. It's going to be up beyond the five foot. Anyway, my frame keeps slipping here, the tape's not sticking well. But then when we removed the walls, we discovered a problem. Like I said earlier, these are just, they're not structural as far as supporting the roof. These are strictly for um, attaching the, the plywood on the inside and the aluminum skin on the outside. This is a structural piece right here, right in the middle of window number two, <laughs> or the center window, however you want to look at it. So anyway, I did not want to remove that once I've discovered it. So we're going to do a change up and we're going to put two windows. So one here, skip one there, same on both sides. And then the other two windows, because I purchased six, I don't know if we'll put those over the kitchen, you know, sink, which will be in this area somewhere, you know, just, just beyond the bathroom, have a little counter on both sides of the sink. So it would be in here. Haven't pulled that wall apart yet to see what's in there. Uh, so that's one potential idea. And the other was, we're not going to use the ramp. I mean, there's people that use it, they put it down, use it as a little patio or whatever, back to the windows, or put a couple windows there. It's not like we're going to be walking over them. And so that would give us a, a little more, you know, open feel to this back end. Well, here's what it looks like. This is going to be our starting point. Probably pretty echoey in here. We just have the one vent. And... Uh, you can see the wiring, the existing wiring in the trailer. Don't like the way it was done at all. So I will be redoing that also. So we're pretty much starting with a blank slate here. This is a really light trailer uh, as purchased with all the plywood in it and everything was uh, I believe the curb weight was 2,500 pounds so it's a light trailer you see some things that need attention you know where the electrical comes in just a big old hole hole in the nose right there so lots of things that will need attention and I'm going to start by first uh, doing, uh, you know, the wiring, take care of the, the trailer wiring first. And vent is going to be replaced with a fan. And the, um, it's going to have a cover over it like we used on our car trailer. You can see those up there. So that allows you to run with the vent all the way open, driving down the road, no matter what. You don't have to worry about hail damage or anything like that because those things are, are quite strong and, uh, and work well. They just stick up a little higher than you, know, you may like, but um, they work well. So there's the existing hole where we'll put one, and this is kind of somewhat center of the trailer. That uh, will definitely be close to the, the kitchen sink and cooking areas. And then there's going to be one up in this area, which will be the bathroom. And so we'll have two fans in here, one in the main area, one in the bathroom. While it's in this condition, I'm also going to install the alarm system as well as the um, camera system. And so just like the um, car trailer has, 
It's got uh, cameras so we can see all four sides. And then another thing I'm going to do is these LED lights didn't show up real well in the bright sun. Um, and so I'm thinking about adding, and we'll do that when we get to the floor or the ramp. That'll be one of the last things as far as insulating and stuff I'm going to get to be the ramp. But I'm going to put some uh, lights up at the top of the ramp here. Uh, hang on. So the upper corners, I'll put, um, you know, additional uh, brake and turn signal lights up there. Um, so there, you'll, they'll be seen above a lot of the traffic. I have a, a buddy that years ago had a trailer that came with lights up there, and boy, it was nice. You could you could see what he was doing, even if there was cars between us. And so, anyway, another thing on the to-do list. So, like I said, gonna do the uh, the vents, the. Uh, rough rough in the wiring alarm cameras and then solar so those are my vents and the box is right there and there's um, a piece of the um, channel slotted channel anyway uh, there's gonna be 800 watts of solar on the roof of this thing there will be four channels up there and uh, the um, channels are going to be uh, adhered to the roof. I'm not going to drill any holes in the roof except for the vents and then the, the cameras will be on the side but um, if you know me from our EV conversions I don't like drilling holes in things. I drilled my first holes in the trailer. <laughs> I added this latch keeper or whatever you call it uh, so that uh, when you're in the trailer, uh, you don't have to worry about being locked in. So I can, you know, use the same lock I used to lock the door to lock it, the bar in the open position. So I had to drill two holes. And when I went to, I drilled the first one, got my measurement from the seam, and then I went to do the next one, and I I just slid this, just rotated this a little bit so I could drill that bottom hole. And um, that was a mistake. Got my first scratch too. And so it seems like this scratch is real easy. So lesson learned there. But um, if I if I silicone the snot out of it like they did here, it'll, it'll probably cover the scratch. <laughs> I don't know which I, I don't know which one bothers me more. This glob of silicone or the scratch. <laughs> well, I redid the trailer wiring. Uh, these two white wires hanging from the ceiling. They're just placeholders to show where the uh, two dome lights will go. Um, these will be switched on when you first walk into the trailer just so you can see what you're doing. Um, there will be other lighting, but these are the original ones. We relocated the rear one here. The front one will actually be in the bathroom. And um, so it'll just be one light as you walk in the door unless you flip a switch and select others. But anyway, redid the wiring. Before it went up the nose and down this side and across uh, behind the springs here and then down. And what was funny about this was that they brought, you know, the wire from the clearance side up here down. I mean, they ran a lot of unnecessary wiring. We had a lot of wire left over after we redid this. So what we did is it comes in from the bottom. This is where it comes in from the tongue. And so that didn't change, but instead of running it up the, the nose here, we come down the side, we ran it up here, catch the two uh, clearance lights, and then ran across 
and caught the other two here. The, the rest of the wiring goes down, like I said, to be behind the baseboard. It's all loomed, comes up, comes up the channel here. So the this is, you know, where the wall is right here. So this will be in a, a cavity uh, with an access plate. And so this is all the driver's side wiring. It goes up, completely loomed this time, and across to here, which is where they had the original, uh, the rear clearance light, you know, on the side, and then the ones along the back, all were accessed here. I didn't tear any of the lights off and redo all that, although, you know, they're jagged holes or anything, the wires come through. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt me. But probably can't even hardly see it. I mean, it's, it's loomed and comes down in another terminal strip and, you know, catches the, uh, the tail brake and turn signals on the right side of the trailer. And they had a wire that came from the lower clearance light and went all the way up there. And so, like I said, a lot of wiring left over. Um, and we'll use these attachment points when we add the, the, the lights to the, to the ramp. And so they'll just drop down from here and there will be a, a pass through into the, the ramp and give us those, a second set of um, brake and turn signal lights. So anyway, we're pretty much getting to that starting point where we have the blank slate and we can uh, start to get started. I'm going to have a uh, bed that lifts up um, with a winch and so I got to come up with a mechanism that will do that and have the strength and you know this is a lightly built trailer so I'm going to have to kind of put in my own little support structure it looks like I mean you know these things are just you know really flimsy um, You've got to have the plywood in one of these trailers because that's what gives it a lot of its rigidity. And uh, so you wouldn't want to do much traveling the way it is right now. It just wouldn't be good on the, the siding and so forth. It just doesn't have a lot of strength. And then the ceiling, one by one and a half, you know, not much in the way of a lot of strength there. And so we'll see. We'll see what I uh, end up doing in order to make all the things work that I want to make work. <laughs> so anyway, hope you join me for the journey.